All right, so we are going to look at our practice test for our Unit 9 test here, some trigonometry. So let's take a look here. And first, we're going to find some sine, cosine, and tangent. So the key here is to remember your SOKOTOA. And SOKOTOA, that's just the acronym, a uh, way to remember sine, cosine, and tangent, SOKOTOA. All right. And so we have sine, cosine, and tangent. And we use our definition to remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we start from P because that's the angle that we are given. Opposite is 20. Uh, sorry, I said that wrong. Opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of P is opposite over the hypotenuse. So we've got 20 over 29. All right. The cosine, cosine is, by definition, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we've got the adjacent is 21. The hypotenuse is 29. So we've got 21 over 29. And the tangent, we have the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent is the opposite, which is 20, over the adjacent, which is 21. So 20 over 21. So there's our ratios. I'm going to leave it like that. We're not trying to find the angles or anything like that. That's all we need for that problem there, all right? And next we have, okay, we want to find the ratios of, for the sine, cosine, and tangent of P again. But notice we don't have a side here. We need to find that first, so we're going to use some Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus 2 squared equals 5 squared. And as we work that out, and we'll subtract 4, and we're going to get 21. x squared equals 21, that is. And since x squared equals 21, we can square root both sides. We want this in simplest radical form. And so we're going to say x is the square root of 21. We should ask ourselves, is there a perfect square that goes into 21? Perfect squares are like 4, 16, and 25. Nope. None of those are factors of 21, so this is the square root of 21. We're going to leave it alone like that. All right, so now uh, we have uh, square root of 21. We've got that side there. Whoops. Let's get that again. It ran away. Square root of 21. Okay. Uh, and so we can find our Sokotoa again. So let's find that. So we go back to our definitions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We're starting at this P here. The opposite is 2. The hypotenuse is 5, so we have 2 fifths. Okay. For the cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent, we start at P. 21 is the adjacent, or the square root of 21 is the adjacent leg, the length of it, that is. And the hypotenuse is 5. And now we're at the tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we have opposite over adjacent, square root of 21. And that's pretty much the right answer there. We just don't want to leave it like that because it's not simplified. So we've got to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 21 here. Just multiply by that. It's not simplified because we want to have a no square roots in the denominator, right? And so when we multiply that, we get 2 square root of 21 on top. And the square root of 21 times the square root of 21 is 21 on the bottom. And now we have our ratios. There they are. All right. Again, we're not finding the angles or anything like that, so uh, we will um, just leave it alone like that. Okay. All right. So something funny is happening here. All right. Now, in the next set of questions, we're going to find some missing sides and missing angles using our trigonometry. So let's start off here with number three. And we're looking for a missing side. We know this angle over here. If it helps to call it something like A, go ahead. And then we ask ourselves, uh, what sides do we know in relation to that angle? Well, this is the opposite leg, and this is the adjacent leg. And opposite adjacent, as we know from our Sokotoa. Sokotoa. Opposite and adjacent is tangent. That's the definition of tangent. So we're going to write our tangent equation. Tangent of our angle A is opposite over adjacent. That is the definition. Now we know what A is. It's 56. 
So the opposite is x and the adjacent is 17. Now, uh, tangent of 56 is just some decimal number. If you want, you can go figure that out right now. Uh, or we can just go ahead and multiply both sides by 17 because when we multiply by 17, that cancels out. And when that cancels out, we're left with x, and we have 17 times the tangent of 56. And so we can go compute that now. So we'll compute that 17 tangent of, oh, let's see, we got 17 times the tangent of 56. And that gives us 25.2. So we get 25.2, and that is x, All right? Uh, actually, the direction is said to the nearest hundredth, I believe, there. So we'll round this to 2, 0, because notice here, this is 2, 0, 3. We're cutting off the 3, leaving the uh, 0 for us there, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the next one here. Next one, we've got another missing side. Here's our angle now. Let's call that A. And so we have, this is our adjacent, and this is our hypotenuse. So we need to use cosine. So cosine of A is 17 over X. Actually, we know what A is, right? Okay, so A is 66. So let's replace that with 66 there. Okay, now this one's a, a little more challenging here because the X is on the bottom, so we gotta watch out for that. I'm gonna go ahead and find that cosine 66 now. So cosine 66 here gives us 0 0.4067, okay? 0 0.4067, let's set that aside. 0 0.4067 equals 17 over X. And now we want to make that into a proportion and cross multiply, all right? Now, if uh, hopefully we're, we're at the stage where we can be comfortable, you don't necessarily even need to write that decimal down, uh, and we could just leave it as cosine of 66, uh, but I'll write it down for now. So 0 0.4067 x equals 17. Now we got to divide by that 0 0.4067, okay? 0 0.4067. Really, we're dividing by the cosine of 66. So x is approximately, let's go figure that out here. So we have 17 divided by the cosine of 66, all right? So 17, let's go 7, oops. Okay, let's go new one. 17 uh, divided by, and I'm just going to retype because I want to be accurate here, cosine of 66. And that's 41 point. Seven, nine. So 41.79 is our number, and that's good. 41.79 is x, all right? So that's the idea there, all right? And we'll take this over there. Let's go on to our next one there. And, okay, so we're looking for an angle here. So we want to start it off. We want to define uh, a sine or cosine. Uh, or tangent equation, a trig equation. So in relation to this x, this is opposite, and this is hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we need a sine equation. You've got to decide. You've got to ask yourself, what parts do you know? And that will tell you which uh, trig ratio to use, sine, cosine, or tangent. Well, to go backwards, to go reverse here, if we want to find the angle, we need to use the inverse sign. So the inverse sign of our ratio gives us the angle we're looking for there, all right? And so we can go to our calculator and do the inverse sign here. Uh-oh, what happened? All right, the inverse sign of 12 or 26 gives us 27.49, all right? 27.49 degrees, okay? So remember that inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent finds angles, finds degrees, all right? So the inverse will find the angles, okay? 
So now let's go ahead and go to our next little group here. And in this group of problems, uh, we're going to, let's fix that there. Uh, we're going to find some angles and some sides, all right? So I'll get my calculator out of the way. Okay, so let's get started in that. Uh, first of all, we got these angles. This angle, uh, don't think too hard, all right? Yeah, this angle just adds up to 90, all right? So x equals 90 minus 56, which is uh, 34 degrees, right? So this is 34 degrees, okay, for x. And then now we can find the rest. We can use uh, some sine and cosine. We can say the sine of 56 equals y over 17. If you want to use the cosine of 34, that would be just fine also. And then if we multiply both sides by 17 here, we get our answer. And that's going to give us 14.09. All right, so 14.09. And let's get that in there. So y is 14.09. It's a 9, funny looking 9. And then for z, we can say cosine of z is, no, I'm sorry, cosine of 56. Cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now let's multiply both sides by 17 and see what we get. So we have 17 times the cosine of 56. So 17, 17, come on. 17 times the cosine of 56. And that is 9.51 if we round properly, 9.51, all right. So, 9.51 equals Z, okay? There you have it, all right? Next one here, uh, we got two sides and we need the next one, so that's gonna be Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus five squared equals Z squared. And so this is gonna be uh, one plus 25, and that's gonna be 26. And we're going to square root. That's the square there. Square root. And we get the square root of 26 is z. Okay? So the square root of 26. Can't simplify it, so we'll leave it alone like that. All right? So now we can say this. The sine, uh, well, let's see. doesn't matter. You you pick here. Let's, let's solve for x here. And if we say, let's go ahead and say tangent. Why not? Tangent of x. X is opposite over adjacent. So X is the inverse tangent of 1 over 5. Okay? And so we can go to our calculator for that. And the inverse tangent gives us 11.31. All right? So X is approximately 11.31 degrees. Okay? And now we have... Our y, uh, y, once we have this one, we can just subtract. So 90 minus 11.31 equals uh, y. And so y is equal to, that's going to be uh, 80, nope, it's going to be 78.69 degrees, okay, when you subtract those out. All right, so that's the idea. Again, we use inverse sine to find angles, and we use inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, inverse ratios, okay? Here we have a couple application problems we're going to look at. We've got a guy looking up at a building here, and we want to find this distance. We want to find the total height, but first we need to find the x in this triangle. So the angle he's looking up is 41, and so this x we're looking for is the opposite and the 52 is the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent gives us tangent. So the tangent of 41 is opposite over adjacent. And that's a fairly easy problem to solve. We need 52 times the tangent of 41. And that gives us 45.20. Oh, 
45.20. All right, so we got 45.20 is equal to x. All right, so now uh, that is this height, x, but we need h. So h is going to be that 45.2 plus the 6 feet of the guy here. Let's see here. Come on back. All right, six feet. The guy is six feet tall here. And so we're going to add that on to this. So add six. So we get a grand total of 51.2 feet. All right. That's the idea. Okay. Last one here. Here we got two triangles. And we want to determine if these are true or not. This is a good question. Uh, and this is a smarter balance question. So we have the sine of A. Uh, is it less than the sine of Y? Well, let's think about this here. The sine of A is this long side over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, the sine of A uh, is, uh, let's just call this long. Let's call this short. Okay. It's in, in relation to each other, all right? So long and short. So the sine is this long side over this hypotenuse. The sine of y, which this is similar, this triangle's similar to each other. And so since the triangles are similar, these ratios should be the same. The 5 to 12 is the same as the ratio of short to long, all right? So the sine of this y is 5 over the hypotenuse, well, that's going to be the same as this short over the hypotenuse, okay? So this is going to be like the short side over the hypotenuse, and the sine of A is going to be the long side of the, over the hypotenuse. So no, this should be the other way around. So that is a false statement, okay? Because sine of A is the long side over the hypotenuse. Sine of Y is the short leg over the hypotenuse. Okay, cosine of B. Well, cosine of b, cosine of b is adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's, again, long over the hypotenuse. Sine of w, well, sine of w is opposite. Here's your opposite. Long leg over hypotenuse. So w sine is long over hypotenuse. And this guy is long over hypotenuse also. So yes, they are both equal. Then we're talking tangent. Now, tangent of w is tangent is the long leg over the short leg tangent of a is uh, the long leg over the short leg so those should be the same they're both long leg over short leg so it should be equal and so this is a false statement so there you have it there's the things we need to be ready for on our chapter 9 test so keep working hard and uh, we'll be all ready for tomorrow. All right. Have a good time studying.